everyone out there. Good evening, good night, good day, good morning, wherever you may be in the world, whatever your time zone is. I am Commander Yannick, and welcome to this slightly casual, but nonetheless hopefully fun, Elite Dangerous stream. Now, my apologies for running somewhat late with this one. I had all kinds of last minute technical problems that I just didn't anticipate from happening. So that's just one of those things. But I'm here now, and I hope you will stay the course with me. Right, uh, this evening I do have a few bits and pieces to do. One of them will be around sort of uh, 1800 UTC, will be showing uh, the video. Some of you may have seen, but a lot of you probably haven't, from the very talented Commander Zero Axis which is in itself a very, very cool thing. Uh, definitely one of the best Elite videos I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot, so... <laughs> yeah, it's all good though, it's all good. Right, uh, with further ado, let's have a look where we are at the moment. Uh, this is the uh, Ross 154 system. We're in uh, orbit of the... Uh, Earth-like world, I suppose, is the best way of describing it, isn't it? Of Merlin. Something that, for those of you who know your Elite lore, is a very significant planet in Elite history. Indeed, or the whole system is, really. This was the starter system for the uh, second iteration of Elite, uh, Frontier Elite 2, which was actually my introduction to the Elite series uh, back a few years ago. Um, there are obviously some people in the community, much older than myself, even who obviously started back with the original, original Elite back in 1984, but yeah, no, uh, Frontier Elite 2 came out in 1993, and itself was actually a huge breakthrough in uh, you know the kind of 3D graphics that you could get on a home computer. I see at the time it was mostly like limited to like uh, Amigas, um, fairly early PCs, and I think maybe the Atari ST as well. But yeah, I think there eventually were some sort of minor console versions of that, but I'm not 100% sure about that actually. I'll have to double check that one. But it was a beautiful game, and uh, you could do kind of a lot of the things you could do now in Elite actually. Yeah, you could do things like land on planets. Um, even though the planets were all a little bit samey, to be honest. <laughs> uh, they weren't exactly the same, but they were of all like the same type. All Earth-like worlds are quite similar to each other. You know, all like uh, high metal content type Mars-like worlds were all very similar to each other and so on and so forth. There were some variation, you say, with different planetary types and stars and the like. You definitely had different colour gas giants, but I say because of the colour palette was so much more limited. You know, it was just... Uh, it wasn't quite as sort of amazing as we have now, but that's not really a shock, is it? You know, different times, uh, different technologies, really. And my trusty Cobra Mark IV named Shira after uh, the American astronaut Wally Shira, one of the original Mercury 7, and the commander of the first Apollo space flight, Apollo 7. Well, the first manned one, anyway. And the Cobra IV. It's one of those sort of relatively uncommon ships. Not everyone necessarily has one, but uh, or access to one. It's uh, one of those things. I think people who signed up as a Kickstarter or in the early game uh, got it. I was not a Kickstarter, but I did sign up quite early on. And oh, in the background there, there's the gas giant called Aster, which is an unusual name. But and this is get what uh, David Braben and Ian Bell did back in the day. I don't think Ian Bell was involved with the second Elite as he was with the first. I do think he had some input into it. And like David Braben took on from there. I think this place also I uh, took a photo of it and sent it to David Braben actually for the uh, anniversary of uh, Elite, I think, 25th anniversary of, uh, of uh, Frontier Elite Dangerous. Yeah. And uh, he actually uh, liked it on Twitter, so I was quite pleased by that. But yeah, that was a few years ago now. But it's a it's an underrated little ship, I think, the Cobra. Yeah, it does have a certain 
exclusivity flex to it. I won't deny that for a second, but yeah, it's uh, it's a nice looking spacecraft. I mean, I, th I think Pure Rats have mentioned to me they think it's actually quite a good uh, Pure Rat spacecraft. Hello to those of you out there watching, those of you in chat. How's everyone doing? Hope you're all having a good day. Uh, yeah, I thought it would be nice to start somewhere of kind of significance, at least for the game. I know a lot of people talk about the lore of the leads in different places that we've been to. Yeah, for this reason I've had like quite a change in my tech setup. I'm using a second PC for streaming purposes now, which is cool. I mean, I hope it has some kind of streaming advantage in the future, but we will find out tonight if that is indeed the case. Yeah, I don't usually stream at this particular hour of the of the, the day, but I just thought I'd do it for a bit of a change really. I don't think I don't know how many people are actually trying to stream Elite right now. Probably not a huge number, but there you have it. Right, I think it's probably best to crack on and see what we can do. It double check they've actually got yeah planetary vehicle hanging exactly so that's all good yeah that's nice right let's actually a quick look at the system just to sort of show you some of it but I say it was definitely the starting point in Elite uh, 2 and therefore yeah the place where I was first introduced to a game I probably spend at least a few thousand hours playing yeah, Merlin, Earth-like world. And we've got the uh, obligatory large collection of fleet carriers in the system. Not as many as you would think, but still for a sort of central bubble location, it's not really a surprise. Should not be a surprise to anyone. Okay. My volume might be a bit low on this, actually. Yeah, let me know if it is uh, okay that you can hear me fine. Right, here we are, yeah, back in the realms of the central bubble. Oh, who's this around? Oh, Jiggy von Richthofen, the very famous explorer. I think second in the all-time list of first discovered behind uh, Kit Ostland. But a very famous and very sort of decorated name indeed. Uh, yeah. See who else is about this evening. Mattia, yeah. Any further out into the galaxy? There's probably a few people around. Yeah. Oh, it's a fleet carrier out there. Oh. <laughs> I think I didn't transfer all of my ships actually back from Apollo 11. If I was a uh, I think that's probably it, isn't it? Well, I don't see why else my stuff would be that uh, that far out. For any obvious reason? No, nonetheless, I'll just transfer them back. Just surprised to see. I think I didn't remember leaving my ships out there. Why would they be over there? In the past, sometimes I've left them in Colonia or at a you know a station or a carrier somewhere else. Because obviously, a lot of carriers these days in the BSSA are considered to be uh, independent stations anyway. But yeah, back to today and the bubble. Actually to see Chicky in the bubble at all is kind of surprising. Well, the last time that he's been in the bubble <laughs> he thought he should actually check out bits of the game that he previously didn't. Yeah, We could return to Shinrata Desra have some fun there but I think today it might be a good idea to maybe do some, uh, some combat and some general sort of looking around. I have considered actually climbing Mount Neverest at Nervi, but that's going to take a while and probably some planning. Probably one because of, of the sheer size of it, one of these places in its very nature that you can't just really turn up and try and climb. You need to have, kind of have some kind of plan and you know, one of the few places that are really like that. Most mountains in the game you can just turn up and climb them, but I think Mount Neverest is probably best done in a group because of the amount of time as well that you take to climb it, it is obviously the, n the tallest known mountain within Elite Dangerous and uh, yes here we are 
I think I'll return to Shinoi to Desra actually. That seems like a wise move. Okay, let's do that then. Sight to see, like so many things in Elite, there are so many sort of pretty places. Okay. You know how the stream quality is doing. I say this is the first time that I've actually used a dual PC setup on this one, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Really, still very cool. Very early days of this one as well. So yeah, if it. Uh, Hopefully there's a fewer frame rates slowed down and so uh, yeah, cracking up or any other problems with it. But we'll soon find out one way or the other. It shouldn't be too difficult to uh, to spot any issues if they occur. And uh, let's crack on. I know there's a new update coming for Odyssey. Number seven. But then again, I don't have a huge amount of uh, hope, especially as far as exploration is concerned. Because most of the updates so far have been largely centered around bubble related uh, matters. And uh, the terrain issue, it looks like they've tried to actually kind of disguise some of the, the repeating tiles. It's not being got rid of at all, as far as I'm aware. So, episode, so episode update 6, I did actually check it out and see, uh, yeah. There been any change, and I think they have been, some of the tiles have been rotated, and they tried to disguise it under, you know, yeah, by using various some techniques on the graphical techniques on the surface. But you could still tell that there was repetition involved, and quite visibly so. so yeah, we'll see what happens with that. At the moment, I'll be sticking to Horizon for the foreseeable future, say because I can't really actually play Odyssey even with Update Six with any particular sort of fluidity. Which is interesting because it's got worse for me. A lot of people it's got better. For me, the frame rate has actually become worse. And it's it's difficult. I mean, it's bad enough me trying to do it, let alone I can't stream that. I mean, would any of you really want to watch 5 to 10 frames a second? Probably not, you know. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Let's get going. And don't get me wrong, I said before, it's like there are good things about <coughs> Odyssey. I mean, there are obviously the actual mechanics on foot are excellent, and there are some beautiful scenes to be seen. Some of the bottom for sampling and yeah, various creatures, like creatures and plants and things are quite interesting. I'm not, I never really complained about any of those at all, but it's, uh, as you know, for both series and people of the terrain is a critical matter and probably a game-breaking one for a lot of people. But that's in the near future and we'll see what happens. But for now, it's just a matter of uh, cracking away. I probably shouldn't have put casual stream into this. Should, uh, it probably makes it look uh, more silly than it is. Oh. More casual, unnecessarily casual. Really, really. Jameson Memorial. Hello to anyone who's just joined the stream. If you're having a good one, wherever you may be in the world, whatever your time zone is, hello.
station of the pilots for the mission. Well, they didn't die, so it's not the pilot for the mission, but this is obviously a forward base for most people. We are happy to have you, Commander. Please note that it's good the sheer convenience of this. I mean, it's not their actual home system, so yeah, that's why I say forward base. Automated docking bay 1-3. Automated docking initiated. Commander, we have arrived. Some people would complain about the use of autopilot mode. I mean, what the hell? I don't really care. I can do all these kind of things manually perfectly well. It's just, you know, especially if you're doing it on a regular basis, it becomes incredibly tedious very quickly. So it's good to have the automated option anyway. Yeah, these all have their, uh, their points. Especially if you're doing trading or any kind of mining activity, anything you want to do repetitive action, I'd say then an autopilot is very useful indeed. You can usually just look at that, leave it to its own device, and it'll be fine. Get a cup of tea or whatever you want to do. And it's still there. Be done. Thank you. Okay. Because of the uh, Apollo 15 expedition, I've not really done much. Uh, combat for a while. That would be a good time just to have some fun doing it. Right, okay. Actually, I'm curious of those ships that I left uh, at the distance. Yeah, Scorpio is a long way off now. Should kind of be bothered to pull it back uh, over here. Yeah, I suppose I, I will because it is like my longer range ship. So it's a lot of money, but yeah, why not? I can just get the money back quite quickly. And I do have need for it, possibly. If I want to dash across the galaxy. <laughs> the alternative, obviously, is to use this. The uh, orange chariot crate phantom of mine, which uh, I've used on a couple of expeditions. I used it on the Orion and uh, Mercury's Wings expedition. I think it's the first time I actually had used the same ship on two separate expeditions. Before that, I'd usually, you know, taken a fresh ship every time and, like, preserved the, uh, the ship for that expedition for uh, posterity, as it were. But in this case, Orion's chariot works so well, I thought, well, why the hell not just keep using it? You know, it's fun, does everything I want to do, it's long range, etc. Yeah. That's enough of a boost to save me if anything go badly wrong on IG World, etc. Or any world for that matter. If you make a mistake. <coughs> when you're coming into land. Uh, yeah, this one. Uh, I have actually used also on the uh, Apollo 15 expedition in part. But I also use my main sort of ship for those ones as being the Orca I use for Apollo 11 and Apollo 15 as my like main meetup ship, I suppose. But I did use this in sort of in between waypoints sometimes. If you want to get from A to B quickly, a good long range is a good thing. And or you want to do a certain amount of exploring in a certain limited amount of time. Yeah, it's a good thing to have these kind of big uh, jumps. Though to be fair, I've actually said uh, I'm going to pull back my Scorpio Anaconda. It has a longer range than this, but it's not radically longer. This is actually probably easier to live with other long distance. That's just my opinion anyway. I mean, a lot of people love their anacondas. Before, I've, I've used them quite a bit, but that, it's not necessarily my favourite ship. I can see why people love them, because it's a good, big, all-round ship. You can do virtually anything. And that's fair enough. Same can be said with the crate, though, even though it's not such a big ship. But, yeah, it's the sub... Uh, so it's the super cruise handling that I prefer with these. The, the anaconda does not turn quickly in the super cruise, of course, so... Still, uh, back to the uh, wonderful Great Phantom of Orion's. Actually, I'm not going to use that day. What am I talking about? I need to uh, m mixed up in what I was uh, thinking about in uh, previous uh, expeditions and things. Yeah, this is the one. The uh, little Corvette called Great Scott. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's the one. Now, the question here remains, what kind of configuration shall I use? It's probably going to have to be a sort of PVE one, isn't it? I did have it set up partly as like a PVP 
one in mind for the expedition for security purposes. So, Danko encounter of arm unknown. I think it's actually presently set up for PvP. It's not an ideal PvP ship, I know, but that's the way it was set up. At least for the expedition, anyway. Okay. Yeah, the desktop sound, I think, is actually very quiet as well. Tell me if you can hear that okay. Because it seems to be maybe a bit too quiet, possibly. Let's increase it slightly and see what happens. So I think the music may have been a little bit loud. I say this dual uh, PC setup is uh, a new one to me. So I haven't quite got everything as uh, honed in as I, I would have done on my single PC setup. But that's something I'm getting used to anyway, bit by bit. Right, let's outfit and see what we have. Right, yeah, I thought so. It's almost totally multi cannon. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Got some nice, uh, large, effective multi cannons. Yep. Incendiary rounds. Pretty sure they've both been modified heavily. Yeah, I thought so. Now, instead, for some of these smaller ones. Yeah, I may actually switch these out with uh, something else. Actually, out of curiosity, let me see if I've got any modules stored distantly that I would want to transfer back. Again, with the expedition, sometimes your stuff ends up in all kinds of weird places. Especially in some of I actually docked up more than one fleet carrier along the way. So, yeah, it does happen. Various cargo racks. Range of drive boosters, thrusters. Yeah. Actually, I think this might be a good idea to transfer back. Uh, yeah, some of the pulse lasers I think might be an idea to have. They don't have very high power draw. That's uh, certainly a good idea, I think, for PvE fighting. Regeneration, healing beam, yeah, they have their uses as well. Mine launchers, again, everything is replaced. Ooh, the thermal vent, now I do like this one. Thermal vent is definitely one of my more f favorite, favorable uh, modifications. Ooh, I think I might put this on the ship, actually. It's very nice. That seems like a good idea. Yeah, I'll probably do that in a minute. Actually, I'll do it now while I still remember. <laughs> Actually, it's 15 minutes away, so yeah. Transfer to here. There's pulse, laser plasma accelerators. Uh, yeah, that's some not bad weaponry here. Not bad at all. Various FSDs of various kinds. Hmm. Overcharged weapon. What's this got to say for itself? No, class 4 plasma accelerator. That's a hell of a kickback of a weapon. At least in the heat terms, anyway. Okay, um. Yeah. So we'll transfer some of these to this location because I've also got a cutter which. Makes some of these very large modules. Yeah, it's a good point actually. Actually, a lot of this stuff should be just transferred here because it would be a wise move. And a lot of these stuff are, are scattered around for very good reasons. I say it's uh, offloading, unloading stuff from uh, fleet carriers back from the Apollo 15 expedition. So that's uh, worthwhile. Can I actually change the uh, name of the stream while I'm actually midstream? I don't think you can. Is that something I might check out? 
anyone in the chat knows, uh, do let me know. So I'm not sure it's actually quite applicable. I wrote that yesterday and before I'd really truly decided what I was going to be doing. Yeah, I'll transfer all these back to Shinra to Desra. Desres. <laughs> Ooh, that looks interesting. I'll transfer these back in because the cost is minuscule. It's good to have them all these things in one place anyway. Yeah, I think I down uh, offloaded all these from one of the fleet carriers that I took back. Uh, it wasn't the same fleet carrier that I was using for much of the trip though. That was uh, just barely as one. But yeah, some upgrades. Yeah, mining ways, I don't need those anymore. I can sell those. Uh, they're distantly stored anyway. I can buy them more easily locally anyway. Pulse lasers, yep. I transfer them all to of this location. Uh, burst lasers as well, give me some flexibility. I think I did develop previously quite a good PV setup, and I'm trying to even remember what it was. It was something fairly decent, but it wasn't, you know, out of this world fantastic, but it was fairly effective. Uh, look at this beam laser, that's a very standard beam, non modified. <laughs> fair play, fair play. Uh, flow control, pulse laser, phasing sequence. Yeah. I think I'll definitely keep the uh, incendiary round multi cannons at the class 4 uh, hard points. Let's check the internal. Yeah. Is the drag drives? Yeah, I always kept those on. That made sense. It's remarkably maneuverable. Such a big ship sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. All's good in an order. Now this is where it gets interesting. A lot of reinforcement put through this. Fairly standard fuel scoop. Probably don't actually need the planetary vehicle hangar anymore. But yeah. Doing this for combat though, I'll keep all the odds and sods together. Yeah, the French had interdicted that, that was going to be used again for sort of for miscreants in PvP for additional security, but in the end I didn't need to use it. Not personally anyway. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right, yeah, I don't think I need to modify very much in terms of externals there. Utility mounts. Now the shield boosters. If there's any better shield boost than I have, I may use them, but for now. Uh heat sink launcher, that's fine. Now the hard points. Yeah, the transit was how you level that, but uh for the class ones, my transfer options. Got a beam laser with flow control. Uh, actually, the power draw is less than the multi cannon that I've got. It's a long range multi cannon. Uh, the efficient weapon first. That's interesting. Very interesting. Distributed draw is quite high, though, so much higher. I mean, like, distributed draw is actually non existent for a multi cannon, but we knew that anyway. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. These are both long ranges. Yeah, you can engage the enemy at a longer distance than you can. I know some uh, PvPers definitely do that. It seems like a reasonable tactic to use. We put not like snipering, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Just got an invite from uh Commander Bailey Lassan. 